what better way for the US to humiliate Russia than to have a fifth generation fighter that could take on the Russian sixth generation MiG-41 fighter with relative ease? That's sure to be a proud moment for the Americans, one that they're willing to pay a whopping $10.9 billion to see. Yes, the US military has just awarded $10.9 billion to Lockheed Martin to upgrade the world's first fifth generation fighter, the F-22 Raptor, into a beast powerful enough to break into the sixth generation realm. However, as this move to upgrade the F-22 had been kept secret for the longest time, we can only speculate the intention behind it. So we'll focus less on the motive in this video and more on the fact that an already lethal F-22 Raptor fleet is fixing to become the most powerful fighter once again. There's a reason the F-22 Raptor is the most tightly guarded fighter in the US fleet, so much so that there is a federal law preventing it from being sold and exported to any foreign nations, even including strategic allies of the United States, such as Japan and Australia. This $350 million fighter simply remains the core of the air superiority of the United States, and its development was nothing short of an Oscar-deserving drama. To put an end to a seemingly incoming Soviet threat in the 1980s, the US had to ignite some intense face-off between two of its largest aerospace companies, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman. The Air Force laid out the requirements for an advanced tactical fighter that could take on the world, leaving it to the aerospace companies to draw up proposals that fit the requirements like a glove. Of the proposals submitted, the designs from Lockheed and Northrop were easily the top picks, and both designs were graduated to the next stage to come up with prototypes. Some months passed and the prototypes were in, the YF-22 from Lockheed and YF-23 from Northrop. The Air Force officials did some decision-making rituals that saw the YF-22 emerge the winner and Northrop's YF-23 finding some museum to hide in for a while. The YF-22, on the other hand, would go into production and then into service where it was renamed the F-22 Raptor, and so the world's first fifth-generation fighter was born. The F-22 took to the skies for the first time on September 7, 1997, and it was as amazing for Americans as it was humbling for the Soviets. Powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW100 turbofan engines with two-dimensional vectoring nozzles, the fighter had a top speed of Mach 1.9 and Mach 2 with afterburners. This wasn't exactly a record-breaking speed, even at the time, but for understandable reasons, it was satisfying, as the Air Force was simply not as thirsty for speed as much as they were for stealth and maneuverability. But in a sixth-generation playing field, speed is not something to be traded off and thus one upgrade that Lockheed Martin would aim at is enabling the Raptor to fly at high supersonic speeds without the use of afterburners. To bring this super cruising dream to life, they could fit it with the most advanced American jet engine in operation, the Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine, an engine that provides a thrust of 43,000 pounds, 22% more thrust than the current engine on the Raptor, and with a more pocket-friendly flight per hour cost too all without having to sacrifice the fighter's thrust vectoring capabilities, which are, in large part, responsible for its super maneuverability and air dominance. And that's not all in terms of boost and top speed. The skin upgrade for the F-22 Raptor will likely see the fighter fitted with new reflective tile-like skins, which makes the jet move faster by cutting through the air quicker and causing less drag, while simultaneously withstanding the stress and heat that comes with supercruise flight. The effect of this new skin would also include improved integrated avionics, situational awareness, sensor sensitivity, and stealth. Where the fighter doesn't directly reflect significant electromagnetic energy from radars, thereby skyrocketing its survivability and lethality against air-to-air -air and surface-to-air threats. Some images of a Raptor fitted with new advanced skin have already been captured by talented aviation photographer Santos Caceres and the images are just as fascinating as a fortune teller would have predicted. The skin was proof of significant advancements in developing a new class of infrared search and track systems that are in the early processes of being widely fielded by the Air Force and Navy, as well as developmental work on emerging aerial laser systems and targeting capabilities against a mirrored target. 
and all of these were expected. With just shy of $11 billion at their disposal from their advanced Raptor enhancement and sustenance program deal with the US Air Force, Lockheed Martin would not be looking to spare any expense in modernizing this fighter with a decade's worth of technological advancements in hardware, software, logistics, and armaments, possibly starting with seemingly revolutionary directed energy weapons. Lockheed Martin had already made immense progress in the development of laser-directed energy weapons and so could have the Raptor fitted with these non-kinetic armaments, making it the first fighter to be fielded with them. Just another record under the fighter's belt. And on the other side of the coin, referring to kinetic weapons, the Raptor could be treated to newer versions of guns and the supersonic or hypersonic missiles. Moving on to the internal organs of the fighter itself, well, it's practically impossible to know what lies beneath the F-22 Raptor's titanium alloy body and epoxy composites, because, as said earlier, it's a tightly guarded secret. However, seeing as the Raptor is way past being a teenager, its systems, which were top of the line when the fighter was introduced, are outdated by now. So a complete overhaul of the system's hardware and installation of the newest compatible software might not be too far-fetched. The details remain bleak for now, but one thing is sure. Once these upgrades come together into one immaculate piece, the F-22 Raptor becomes an even more critical component of the US's Global Strike Task Force, designed to project air dominance rapidly and at great distances, with capabilities to defeat whatever airborne threat comes its way. A true fighter, unmatched by any known or projected fighter aircraft. The Raptor's pilots will also enjoy quite the treat with coming upgrades. Their fighters integrated avionics, where, through sensor fusion, data from the radar, other sensors, and external systems are filtered and combined into a common view will be greatly enhanced to match AR and VR levels of immersion, and yet simplified enough to reduce the workload on them, which must be exciting. But perhaps the most excited for these upgrades would be Lockheed Martin, whose proposal to fly a bomber variant of the Raptor, known as FB-22, was shot down in 2006. The FB-22 was a stealth bomber concept born out of the over-effectiveness of the F-22 fighter. Being a fighter, the F-22 would be expected to lack in air-to-ground combat situations, but it didn't. Lockheed Martin then decided to capitalize on this ambiguous nature of the fighter by proposing its bomber variant to the US Air Force, which was a welcome idea for a while, with the Air Force reportedly looking to acquire 150 FB-22s in its fleet. The FB-22 was equipped with 80% of the F-22's avionics, software, and flight controls, with the only significant changes being the structural redesigns coming in the form of a revised fuselage and delta wings three times the size of that of its fighter cousin. These changes reflected in the bomber's ability to carry significantly more fuel and weapons. Its payload of 30 to 35 small diameter bombs, for instance, was a massive capacity upgrade to the 8-unit capacity of similar 250-pound bombs of the F-22. The FB-22 bomber was designed to have a maximum combat load of 30,000 pounds without stealth and 15,000 pounds with stealth, 5,000 pounds of which would be precision-guided bombs. And even more impressive was its range, which sat at about 1,600 miles without external fuel tanks almost tripling the 600 miles of the F-22 fighter without external fuel tanks. All signs were pointing towards a bomber with the range of a small aircraft carrier and the speed of a fighter, as the bombs would have been capable of a Mach 1.95 top speed if it was fitted with two Pratt & Whitney 135 engines as planned, far outpacing America's top-of-the-line bomber, the B-2 Spirit, which has a top speed of just over Mach 0.8. The development of the FB-22 would however be halted following the 2006 Quadrennial Defense Review, which called for a new longer-range strategic bomber instead of one born out of technology designed to better suit a fighter. And with that, all visions of the FB-22 serving as a bridge between the Air Force's current bomber fleet and future bomber fleet were very quickly blurred. Ironically, the upgraded F-22 Raptor is also advertised as a fighter to serve as a bridge between the Air Force's current fighter fleet and the future fighter fleet, particularly the 6th generation, next generation air dominance fighter. 
So, to prevent the F-22 plans from coming to an end like with the FB-22, a few very important things must happen. Firstly, you have to subscribe to this channel, and then give this video a thumbs up. Okay, those are not Lockheed Martin's recommendations, but it does help our channel grow, and will be greatly appreciated. So that'll be all for this video, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.